Now, your next choice is another one which people would say was uh, a great Doctor and Companion relationship. Um, sort of a different kind of Doctor and Companion relationship is shown in this story, and it's one with Sylvester McCoy and Ace, and it's the Curse of Fenric. Oh, Professor, what's this water doing? Oh, it's the roof, it leaks. It always seeps in like that where it's raining and there's an east wind. The problem is it's not raining, there's a west wind. Oh! Oh! Yeah, um, I mean, as I was saying at the beginning, this is the, the Doctor that I first knew when I was a young kid, and um, um, it was interesting going back and revisiting them to see just how bad that first season is, <laughs> because I think you kind of, you uh, you don't realise that when you're watching as a kid, you think it's all amazing, um, but he was very much my Doctor, and I, I do have a very soft spot for Sylvester. Um but um, I think when he met Ace, um, who is quite a, it's quite a troubled soul, isn't she, really? Um, I think that really, again, really brought the best out of him, made him much more of a, um, had that far, uh, paternal kind of relationship with her. Um, and, yeah, that second season is, is just great. It's really good. Um, and it, it really sort of culminates with um, Curse of Fenric. There's, there's that sort of awful bit at the end where um, after she's learnt, she finally learned to trust someone again after all these years of being quite troubled, um, he has to convince her that um, she shouldn't trust in him, you know, which is yeah. just heartbreaking that bit, you know, where, um, and it's done so well. I mean, you can tell, I think like Liz Sladen and Tom Baker, you can tell that Sophie Aldred and Sylvester McCoy are, are good friends outside of the program, you know, and they, they've continued mm. to be friends mm. since as well. And it really comes across in 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 scenes like that one. Um, but it's not just about it's not just about that. It's it's also a great um, story. Um, it's got some fun ideas that sort of weaving in the history with the with the alien thing that works well sometimes. And uh, you know, I, I love the uh, hemovores, the the sort of vampires coming out of the seas. A fantastic sort of harking back to the sea devils or whatever. Um, but no, it's just, it's, I'm really glad that Sylvester got some, some top notch stories in that last season because, um, I felt the first season really let him down. So it was nice for him to go off with a bang really. Um, and yeah, I love that one. It's probably my, probably my favorite, sometimes joint favorite with remembrance, which is also a great, a great, great story as well. Um, one of the things about this story is you've got um, the sort of an ancient enemy of the Doctors in Fenric who we haven't seen before, but it sort of has a off-screen, an off-screen history. Yeah, yeah, it's quite for an interesting villain. Yeah, it's quite fun when they do that. Um, they did that in um, Face of Evil as well, where they and. Uh, um, oh, and t- Time Lash, which I was watching today. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're both sort of ones where uh, it's it's said that he's revisiting, but you never sort of saw when he visited the first time. Um, I think it's more it, it's interesting in uh, Face of Evil as well because you can see that the sort of the echoes and the footprints that the Doctor leaves behind. You know, even by trying to help, sometimes it can actually do more harm than good at times. You know, because um, he he was trying to. In that particular one, I don't know if you've seen it, it's great, great one, that one. Um, he, he was trying to help a computer to um, basically evolve or whatever. Um, and when he went away, it kind of evolved to sort of near God proportions and took on his, uh, the Doctor's identity. So when he comes back to that society, they all think, they all see the Doctor and think he's evil, you know. Um, and there's that great line, there's that great sort of comedy line where he, he meets Leela for the first time, an officer, a jelly baby, and uh, she says, uh, "So it's true that the, uh, the evil one eats babies." So it's, <laughs> it's just one of those great sort of comedy baker moments. Um, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> I've waffled on. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, Fenric. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see, you know, to hear of all the stories that have been happening while we've not been watching. It, it does that a lot in Matt Smith, doesn't it, as well? Yeah. He has a lot of those. Goes off and has a, a sort of a, a tie-in novel adventure or 
Yeah, um, wasn't it like a hundred years or something? He was off, and then he came back in uh, the Impossible yeah. Astronaut. Yeah, just a hundred years wandering around. Yeah. Um, this one is a bit similar to um, Ark in the fact that both seasons that they come from have a, as you mentioned before, a plot link. Yeah. Like an overall plot arc. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't understand the Sylvester one quite as much. You guys can probably enlighten me a bit. It's the, uh, uh, what's he called? The guy that was. Um, Cartman Master Plan. The, yeah, the Cartman Master Plan. Yeah, wasn't it something about the Doctor being more than we realised? More, you know, like one of yeah. the maybe as you know, uh, as being back there when Amiga was there or something. I, I can't remember yeah. what it was, but there's some, there's some sort of thing that wasn't actually revealed. I don't think it was revealed, was it? It's a lot about no, no, chessboards and things. <laughs> got a bit complicated at that point. Trying to bring mystery back into the Doctor. Because yeah. it's something that we, you know, we were saying earlier with, you know, in um, Holton and early Troughton. There definitely was some mystery there. And, you know, who's the Doctor? We don't know who he is. And that's something that was missing for a while. Yeah. And no, I think it worked well for that, didn't it, really? Uh, putting the mystery back in and... Uh, it's a shame it kind of was cancelled when it was because it was really starting to to turn itself around at that point. Um, it had it had been pretty bad, I think, in the mid mid to late eighties. But um, that's my personal opinion. A lot of people love that that era, but um, yeah, I think that that last season it, um, I think really turns it back. And um, it's a shame it had lost so many fans at that point because um, I think had people seen how good. Things like Remembrance of the Daleks and Curse of Fenric um, were, um, you know, I think it, it might have survived a bit longer. But then, you know, there's, there's an argument to say if it hadn't have gone away, it wouldn't have come back as strongly as it had. So, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, so this series sort of seen as a bit of, sort of building up some things that were seen in the new series, as I've mentioned before on the podcast. And with this story, I... Um, it's even more obvious, really, because despite the God Complex being a story I like, they reuse a lot of elements from the Curse of Femric with the sort of faith being to ward off the, the enemy. Yeah. yeah. And the Doctor having to break his companion's faith in him. I mean, that is a straight lift from the Curse of Femric. And I didn't really realise that until, I think, like, I haven't seen, cause I haven't seen Curse of Femric in a while. Oh, did you see um, Did you see God Complex first then? I, I saw um, this film at first, but I hadn't seen it in a while. Oh, uh, okay. Complex, but looking back, it, you can tell that it sort of got, it makes the God Complex go down in my estimations, really, because it is quite a bit of a bit of a copy. Yeah, yeah. Or tribute, still, maybe. It's <laughs> okay, tribute, yeah. Um, yeah, um, you definitely see more when you go back and, and watch it again. Um, I think that was one of the things I loved about making this this book. Really, was uh, giving me an excuse to really go back and, and watch a lot of uh, you know a lot of the shows that I'd, I'd not seen, either not never seen or only seen once. So, um, you know, and give them a uh, you know another go. 